Welcome back. So in this segment, we're going to be paying tribute to, like I said, one of Marvel's biggest contributors ever, um, Steve Ditko. He passed away on June 29th and kind of goes unrecognized, I think, in the Marvel Universe. He's from mainstream. A lot of people don't know, don't really know him. Uh, I think a lot of people know the name Steve Ditko, but yeah, they might not. Um... Like this new generation watching like the Marvel Universe movies. Oh like, yeah, for sure. Know who he is, um, and you guys, he was one of the main illustrators and co-writers for some of our most beloved characters, yeah, like Spider-Man, Spider-Man, and, and Doctor Strange. Man, yeah. those were his two main characters with Marvel. Um, and I know, so I guess we, that's why we wanted to give tribute because I, I think we've said it before, but yeah, for sure in the Marvel universe, Spider-Man is really both of our favorite character. Yeah, um, and Doctor Strange is very much becoming one of mine. Um, He's an awesome Came out character. Late to Doctor my Strange, favorite character he, in Infinity War. <laughs> yeah. Um, I lately, since all this, I, I can't get enough of reading Doctor Strange. I'm trying to get my hands on everything I can. Um, and we wouldn't have had either one of these, probably, you know, without Steve Ditko. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, he's a titan in this industry and he passed. Um, yeah, so he brought a lot. So he just kind of wanted to give us a little, uh, a little treat the comic segment this week in, in memory of him. Yeah, and kind of talk about, you know, some of his best issues that we, we feel that he had and kind of talk over, like, the biggest plot points he helped contribute to the characters, the character development. Uh. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, yeah, just starting out. So, I mean, I guess we'll start off with Spider-Man, obviously. He was the bit, yeah. Um, Interesting, th- yeah. So we love Spider Man. Interesting thing, um, mm-hmm. Stanley originally tried to go to Jack Kirby first for Spider Man, um, and I get, he didn't like the Kirby's kind of initial outtake on him, so he gave it to Ditko, and Ditko took it from there, man. And it, his art, the way, you know, we we obviously now from like the modern day two thousand eighteen, we see the art is just crazy now, right? It's just f- yeah. colorful. It comes off the screen. I mean, you're looking back on the six, you know, those old '60s comics. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely very different, heavy, heavy dialogue um, in those in those early '60s. A lot of dialogue, um, and you know, you, you get a lot of those '60s things, especially with the Fantastic Four. They're very, yeah. I mean, back in the time, you know, like Human Torch is just like this outline thing with little lines <laughs> kind of through them. But man, the way Ditko yeah. brought Spider-Man to life, though. It's it was crazy even from back in the time, man. He looked just fantastic. The details and the costume, mm-hmm. um, yeah, man. So we talk. I mean, obviously, Spider Man first debuted in um, it was called the Ama- Amazing Fantasy number fifteen, is when he was when they first did him, and that was his first appearance. It was like half an issue. It was only like twelve. His Spider Man section of that was only about twelve pages long. Um, and it just gave off his basic origin that we all know him, how he's a teenager nerd, science nerd. Um, he's at a science convention in the comics and he gets bit by a radioactive spider. Mm-hmm. Um, and it goes on to him getting the powers and not stopping the thief who kills Uncle Ben. Um, that was that was it. All that in 12 pages brought to life. Um it was taken so well, so then he got his own series, and that's how Amazing Spider-Man started. Amazing Spider-Man number one. Um, and it w- just kind of goes on from there, how he deals with Uncle Ben's death and how he tries to... A lot of it, those early, that era, first issue, is all of him just trying to figure out how to make money. Because um, <laughs> it was interesting back then, you know, he... It wasn't like how the movies kind of portray where he can just kind of do the thing and he just gets paid cash or money. Like a lot of that was like, mm-hmm. no, we can't, we can't write it out. We can't just pay you cash for tax purposes. And we, he was like, so how are we going to write a check to you if you can't tell us who you are? So at first he's having a real hard time finding money in those <laughs> first issues. So it's interesting takes on him. Um, and then, I mean, some of the most iconic moments of, um, again, Amazing Spider-Man 33 is another one. Where it has that icon, where him trying to save Aunt May from dying, um, she's sick with um, radioactive poisoning, mm-hmm. and he's trying to stop, and he's had to get um, radioactivity, uh, an isotope brought in to so Doctor Connors can make a serum for her. Doctor Octopus steals it in his gang, 
And it's that major issue where he, after fighting him, he brings his underwater base on top of him. And it's a major moment in, in, in Spider-Man history of him trying to overcome all that weight on it. And obviously like they've done different, I think the animated series did their own take on it in the nineties mm-hmm. up to most recently with uh, Spider-Man homecoming, um, that movie, they did their take on it too, with him fighting the vulture and, him dropping the foundation on Tom Holland and him that whole thing of him struggling and almost in desperation, almost giving up, but not in overcoming it. And um, Amazing Spider-Man 33 is the one that brought that to life. Um, and again, the realism, the art that, that Steve Ditko brought in that with him, the, it's an, an amazing shot if you haven't seen that that page of him finally getting getting the the um, foundation all, all on off of him. Um, it's crazy. Um, yeah, man. And then just, I mean, just with everything, you know, he brought all the major rogue, like that's the main thing about Spider-Man that we love is his rogue gallery. Every Doc, Doc Ock, Green Goblin, Electro, Mysterio. Yeah, and Spider-Man's been known to have the best villains was in the Marvel Universe. Yeah, they're awesome. They're, um, you know, I, I second I really think he does. Like, his villains are definitely the most unique. I think they match up there, even Batman's villains. Like, that's top notch in Marvel Universe. For sure, man. And so Ditko's art, man, just brought all these guys to life, and it was awesome. Um, and then, God, man, with Doctor Strange, uh, that whole first big major run with Doctor Strange is just so fun to read. Um, it's Strange Tales. Uh, Strange Tales number one ten is the first appearance of Doctor Strange. Um, and again, those uh, are also. Those are like half half an issue is just dedicated to Doctor Strange. So they're actually kind of quick reads. So mm-hmm. if you if you try to bring up the Strange Tales, you know, half the half the first half of the season is or um, issue is just talking about something. It's either relating to Fantastic Four or Nick Fury, Agents of Shield, and then the the last half of the issues are all Doctor Strange. And the way he brought that magic, mysticism, everything into it is is so fun, so colorful, so like psychedelic, man. At the time, I think a lot of back then in the sixties, a lot yeah. of people thought that man, these guys probably had to be on drugs, mushrooms <laughs> to do this. Um, in which they argue that they weren't. <laughs> yeah. But it's so cool. Doctor Strange with everything, just his first major run, just him battling battle um, Baron Mordo or uh, Baron Mordo. <laughs> Mordo. <laughs> um, yeah, um, Baron Mordo and Nightmare, and then it leads into the whole first big run with um, the Dread Dormammu, and just his first struggle with him. Um, it's just so colorful in the dark dimension. Everything, the characters he creates is crazy. I mean the cosmic entity of eternity like just the idea of eternity everything is literally a character in the marvel universe that ditko brings to life is a silhouette of a being that would just it looks like galaxies all within him it just it's just this cosmic space creature all powerful space creature and he brings all that to life and it's so fun i mean this is coming from like a 2018 perspective looking back on these 60s 60s comics like yeah and mm-hmm. you know they still they like, hold, hold up it. man yeah. they hold up and they're so great um yeah man so he, and it's all thanks to steve ditko you know he he didn't have a long career with marvel he didn't um you know he yeah. started at the beginning of it but before i think it was atlas comics right before it turned into marvel comics mm-hmm. Um, and then he left in the late 60s. You know, he kind didn't have... Falling the, out with uh, Stan yeah, Lee. Yeah, that's the rumor. Falling out with Stan Lee. They didn't like some of the direction. Supposedly the rumor with like the Green Goblin and creating the his his actual identity. That's the rumor of it. So, you know, he left Marvel. Um, so, yeah, man, he didn't have as big of a career... Like as long a career with him as a lot of the other artists did, like Jack Kirby and, mm-hmm. you know, later with like Brian Michael Bendis and everything. But yeah, but I mean, he definitely will not. In that short time, yeah. the, his influence and in mm-hmm. everything that he had... Contribution. is legendary. It, it will never be forgotten. Like, you guys, we will not have the Spider-Man we have today, the Doctor Strange. Basically, we would have no Infinity War. The great Marvel Universe that they built up would not be stuff, a thing yeah. without... Those two main characters, man. They, I guess, so. I mean, they become two of my favorite characters in the Marvel universe. Yeah, Spider Man's always been my favorite character in the Marvel universe. 
Yeah. So. So yeah. Um, for sure, guys. So definitely, you know, it's a uh, it's a sad time. He had a long life. Um, a lot of work he did. Um, so yeah, we want to give tribute and uh, rest in peace. Dave, yeah. So thank Steve you, Ditko, for and for thank you guys brought to us. So yeah. So uh, yeah. That's it, man. If you guys haven't read his stuff, definitely look it up. You look it up. If baby. you have read it, definitely let us know what you think in the comments section. Um, if you guys have a favorite comic by him, favorite segment by him, like what? If you guys know something he brought to the characters that we didn't mention today, definitely let us know. All right, guys. So that does it for our comic book segment. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be talking about Mario Odyssey for the Nintendo Switch. So remember, hit that notification bell if you want to be notified whenever we upload videos. Yeah, and please follow us on Twitter. Uh, Handle is at uh, geekly underscore review. And thanks for watching. See you guys.